to Daytona Beach, Florida, home to America's premier muscle car showroom, Hankster's Hot Rods, where we own and house anywhere from 65 to 80 vehicles at any given time. If you are watching the vehicle we are about to present to you today on any other advertisement other than Hankster's uh, website, which is hanksters.com, please be sure to visit our website so you can determine whether th this is in fact a current vehicle that we have for sale. If you are watching this on YouTube, uh, on ClassicCars.com, on Hemmings, uh, this vehicle may no longer be uh, available for sale. We own all of our cars, so you're dealing directly with the seller. There are no third parties involved. We are not a consignment dealership. We welcome all of you to visit Hangster's Hot Rods to look at the vehicle you might be purchasing. We encourage all of our buyers to come in person. Uh, Daytona Beach is a, a great tourist destination. There's a lot to do here. Uh, it's, it's a fun two, three day trip, maybe even a week long trip. Uh, come check out your, our cars for yourself. Uh, check out underneath. We'll take it on a test drive. Have some fun. Hangsters.com. And uh, if you want to reach us by phone, it's 386-944-9219. Enjoy today's presentation. Okay, this is our engine bay of a 1970 Chevy Chevelle. Uh, this thing is a real SS car with a numbers matching, and I'm going to emphasize again, numbers matching engine in it. Power steering, power brakes on it, disc brakes, uh, dual stage master cylinder, high flow radiator the way they came from the factory, correct uh, radiator hoses top and bottom. It has a uh, seven blade uh, flex, flat, flex fan on it with the uh, correct uh, fan shroud also. The um, heat is hooked up to the passenger compartment, so if this thing does go north, uh, you'll be able to keep from freezing in the winter and, and defrost your window also. It has a set of really large tube headers on it. I'm going to call them two inch. Uh, they may even be a little bit larger than that. They may be two and an eighth inch diameter headers. Conventional uh, distributor in it, uh, GM uh, point type distributor in it. Uh, conventional plug wires also. Uh, the uh, water pump's been replaced. It looks like a polished aluminum one on it. It has a sidewinder type uh, tarantula intake manifold on it, a double pump Holly carburetor on it. I'm going to call it a 750, but without checking the numbers, I don't know for sure. But uh, I'm going to guess it's going to be at least a 750 on this type of a motor. The um, inner fender panels are painted semi-flat black, just the way they should be from the factory. Uh, newer battery in it, an interstate battery. The uh, Core support, there's totally undisrupted. Still has its uh, original tags on the uh, front of the uh, radiator support shroud housing on top. The uh, washer bottle is the original one and still intact, and it has fluid in it too, and the washers are hooked up on this vehicle. The uh, power brake booster appears to have been replaced through the years. It is a newer booster. The um, cowl tag is still intact on the vehicle and very, very legible. Devin will give you some good high resolution pictures of that. 14 inch unsilenced air cleaner on it with the correct nomenclature on it for 396. Uh, aftermarket chrome valve pan covers on it. Uh, short ones, just very similar to what uh, Chevy put on them with Chevrolet designation on it. Uh, really nice looking engine compartment. This thing uh, has a lot of originality in the fact that it is a numbers matching engine. It appears to. Um, um, have been massaged a little bit through the years here uh, with the headers and the intake, you know, things that you would normally do to any of these cars, you know, especially in that era. Everybody wanted to put intake carbs and headers on them. And uh, this guy already has it done. Uh, under hood is nice and clean, just the way it would be from the factory. It does have the under hood insulation, which has uh, been replaced. It's all nice and clean and clear. It has a coal induction style hood on it with a non functional. <clears throat> flapper on it, so it just has a conventional 14 inch um, uh, air cleaner on it. Great looking engine compartment, and we're going to go around the rest of it and show you what we can on it. Okay, we're giving you a presentation of a 1970 Chevelle, a real SS car, just the way this guy came from the factory. It does have the original numbers matching engine with it. Uh, correct stamping, not a restamp. Uh, the paint on this car is a little bit better, I'm going to call it much better than a driver quality paint job. Certainly, uh, much above whatever came from this guy in 1970 from General Motors. You can see the fitment of the hood to the uh, front fender on both sides is very, very nice. Um, car's been cleared over. You can see the stripes and almost feel them, but you really can't. Uh, there's a lot of clear on the car. The finish on it is very exemplary. 
uh, SS designation in the grill with the uh, painted bar through the center just the way it would be for an SS car. No patina on the uh, headlight basils, absolutely none. Bumper doesn't have any scuffs or marks or scratches or anything on it whatsoever. The plastic windows are all intact. I don't see any that are chipped or missing or, nope, that's just a little stain. Cheval designation in the front. Uh, no marks or dinghies or marks from stones being thrown up through the ears on the front of the uh, bumper also. Very nice dramatic front end on this car, you know. It looks great in the gold color with the black vinyl top and the black uh, SS striping on it. Great looking car. Uh, going down the sides, it does have the uh, wheel lip molding, all four of them obviously. Um, the correct style 14 inch SS wheels made by Kelsey Hayes, but uh, they are the wheels that would have been on this car new in 1970 when it was released. And check this out, look at the fitment. The door fitment, the hood, the fender, uh, SS396 designation, because that's what this guy is. Uh, tinted windshield in the front, eh, correct wiper arms and blades. They're tucked down under there, you can't see them, but they are the correct ones. Dash doesn't have any distortion in it or any cracks on the vinyl. Very, very nice, and where it transitions to the base of the windshield, it can't get any nicer or cleaner than that. The windshield must have been out during restoration and, and just been cleaned up. Everything is very, very nice. Also, the fitment of the trim around the window and your drip rail molding. Let me check it. It's all nice, too. No brooms will whack it through the years. Vinyl top appears to be the original one, and usually where they start to rise in the uh, drip rail area or around the back, this one is still nice and snug. It's very, very nice, very nice condition. Check the window fitment out, and this is usually um, deteriorated somewhat with a lot of patina. This one is not, and look at the uh, front glass to the uh, rear quarter glass. It can't fit any better than it does, and look at this. Clean up into the uh, rubber molding, correct rectangular mirror the way it should be, wipes whiskers. I'm going to call these guys original, but I don't think they need replaced. They're, they're really in great condition yet. Chrome door handle is very, very nice. Fitment of the door front and back. You'll see it again when we close it. I should have mentioned it before. Um, very nice, nice soft, uh, resilient rubbers. Door panels are very nice with the original style armrests on them yet. Molded, not just redone. Uh, let me see. Inside the door is also very clean. The uh, sill molds are really, really nice. The sill moldings, um, they appear to be the original ones. Bench seat car, column shift. A lot of these SS cars came that way. People had families back in that era. They were raising kids and uh, it's okay to get a sportier car, but mom needed a bench seat. So that's how we ended up with a lot of these guys with bench seats in them. These Roadrunners, uh, uh, Chevelles, um, Ford Fairlanes, everything. Um, correct style headrests on it. Uh, carpeting appears to be also original Chevelle uh, floor mats aftermarket in it. Seat belts in the front and seat belts in the rear also in the original style seat belts that came with this guy. And you look inside the doors, you can see how nice and clean the door jams and everything are and the, uh, the door itself, how everything is, is just nice and clean and even the edges where they're rolled over is perfect. Just can't be any nicer. And then check this alignment out. Front door. In the rear, everything is really, really nice on this car. This guy could go in here. The door's just a little bit loose. We have to adjust that in. But the linearity of it is good. It just needs the uh, door pulled in just a second, and that's no big deal. Um, going around the back of it, trim around the uh, back light is just as nice as you'd ever hope. There's no marks or eh, one dent here. I can see it from this side. I can see a little dingy there from being installed. Another little tiny one here. You probably won't see it in the video or in the still pictures, but I'm telling you, they're there. Hat rack itself is very nice and clean. A couple of aftermarket speaker enclosures, uh, covers, uh, put over the aftermarket speakers in it. But the back window fitment, trim, uh, vinyl, everything is very, very nice. And there's no indication, again, of any of this vinyl uh, beginning to come loose. A great look inside of the car. We got one door adjustment, and I didn't find a mark or a chip or a ding or anything down the side of this car. It's about as laser straight as you could get. Set of white light, white liar, white letter uh, tires on it. <clears throat> the correct SS uh, center caps for the uh, Kelsey Hayes wheels on it. And we got a great looking uh, driver's side of the car going around the back. You can see the um, deck lid mimics the fitment of the uh, hood. Really nice, look at this. Can't get any nicer than that. Really great fitment, it stripes the same way. Uh, cleared over, really a nice dramatic look to it. The bumper, 
No marks, no scuffs, no nothing on it. And 1970 only, guys. That's the bumper everybody wants. There it is. Uh, the uh, rubber molding across the back is undisrupted. There's no marks or, or scuffs or anything on it. The uh, argent around the tail light assemblies themselves is very nice and clean and clear. The um, valance underneath the bumper, there's no pull marks or anything with it also. And you can see the correct style for 1970 exhaust extensions on this guy too. Okay, trunk area. Uh, let's see what we got. Nice solid trunk, look at this. Appears to be the original quarters, original trunk, everything. I don't see any indication that it has been repaired or not, does it need any repair. It has a uh, spare tire. Let's see what that guy looks like. Um, it's an original style wheel with the... Uh, it's got a new spare tire on it. Needs some air in it, but other than that, it does have a spare, and there's a jack underneath there also. So there is a jack and a spare tire in the car. And this is very important. Everybody always wants documentation. What do you have for your Chevy? How about the original build sheet? There it is, not a recopy, not a, not a, a photostatic copy of it, but the original build sheet that was released with this car probably came out of one of the uh, door panels whenever they were doing a restoration. But there it is, Devin will give you a close up of it so you can check all the options on the uh, uh, build sheet list. So you got a numbers matching engine and a build sheet. And it's a Chevy. Okay, the uh, underside here, you can see the uh, Jacking instructions are also still intact in the vehicle. Check this out. All the rubbers are real nice and new around the doors, around the deck lid. Uh, just as nice as you'd hope to find. Closes down just the way it should. Down the passenger side, it's going to be the same as the driver's side, I have a feeling. Um, again, you can see a couple little, couple little dinghies here. You're not going to see them in the video probably, but I'm telling you they're there, just so you know. Um, Paint on this car is very nice. We still haven't come across a, uh, a chip or a ding or a mark or an imperfection down the sides of it. Uh, even your wheel lift moldings, they're all really nice. They're nice and uh, uh, shiny and unmarked. The uh, window on this side is the same as it was on the driver's side. Look at that. Seriously, these cars usually have this just really messed up, worn out, or a lot of patina on it. And the window fitment is very questionable on a lot of these cars. Just wear through the years for the windows. This car is not like that. It is just absolutely spot on fitment wise. Look at this. Uh, no mirror on the right hand side. If you want one, we'll put one on for you. Not a problem. Now this door doesn't need adjusted. It has a nice fitment on it. Really great. Tinted glass on the side. I'm going to call it tinted anyway. It looks like it, so we'll call it tinted. And interior, again, eh. Little tiny crack here. There's one little tiny crack here, but you wouldn't replace it. This is a molded uh, style armrest. It has originality, and I'd almost bet that that build sheet came from behind this door here. That's where they usually put them in these Chevelles. You can see the interior a little bit better from this side. Devin will give you some real high resolution photos of it in his uh, uh, video, or not the video, his uh, pictorial presentation. There's going to be about anywhere from 90 to 100 he always puts up for you on this. It does have the correct headrests on it too. They are the molded style headrests that came with this car. Uh, just a really great looking car. Door closes like it should. Check the alignment there. Nice fitment here. Look I mean, it, it, it just can't get any better than that with these cars. And that, in this era, you just did not get any fitment better than what you're seeing on this vehicle here today. Uh, SS396 designation. Again, no marks on our wheel lift moldings. And we're back where we started again. Um, this car's a 1970. It's a real SS. It's a 396 with a numbers matching engine with a build sheet to give you your whole entire option list on it. So there's nothing hokey going on here. It's not a restamp. It is a real documented uh, 1970 Chevelle SS. Okay, this is the uh, underside of our 70 Chevelle SS, a real SS car. Um, gold, black stripes on it. Nice looking car. Uh, this is the original engine that was 
this car was born with. It is not a restamp. It is the original motor that came with this car. Conventional starter. You can see the uh, cooling lights for the transmission, which is the Turbo 400, uh, are still hooked up and functional. No leaks whatsoever on the bell housing area, engine, or transmission, or tail shaft. At least not at this point. That It's a muscle car. If it isn't leaking this year, don't worry. It will next year. Um, steering box still appears to be original. The sway bar this has a heavy duty, yeah it is, an F41 suspension on this car. A heavy duty front sway bar. The bushings on the sway bar, especially that one, are going to get replaced. Roger will get that done for you. Newer shocks, replacements in the front. Disc brakes in the front. Nice fat uh, rotors on it yet. Calipers are real nice. New hardware going to them. Uh, you can see our long tube uh, headers here. Uh, pretty large diameter. They're at least a two inch. Uh, I don't know if they're any larger than that. They may be two and an eight, but they're for two inches for sure. The uh, frame itself is really nice. There's no uh, uh, indication of deterioration whatsoever on that. Original brake line still hooked up to it. It has not been replaced, nor does it need to be. The uh, parking brake is hooked up and functional on this guy yet, too. Uh, the box frame in the front here where it transitions onto the C channel frame, um, no deterioration whatsoever. Little curvature right there, and a couple little marks there from. Uh, being jacked up through the years or having jack stands put on it, one of the two. I don't see any on that section back there, but there is one here. Uh, the floor structural pieces on the uh, floor pans themselves, this all appears to be original under here too, guys. I mean, there's not any indication that the floors have been replaced in this car. I, I believe they are the original ones. And the um, structural pieces are really nice underneath them. The floors have absolutely no dents whatsoever in them or deterioration in any way. Where the C channel transitions over to the box channel in the back. It's also very nice. There's no marks whatsoever on the uh, uh, box sections of the frame, the transition up over the uh, rear differential. The primary pipes go into three and a half inch collectors that go into two and a half inch uh, primary pipes and back to a set of turbo style mufflers. They, uh, I don't know what name they are. Super turbo. Uh, a set of turbo style mufflers. The uh, U joint in the back has been replaced, and so has the one in the front. Again, you can see no leaks whatsoever on this drive line at this point. It really looks good. Got a bird going over. Pretty serious. Wait a second. Pretty close to uh, Daytona International Airport, and every once in a while, some of the birds get a little bit lower and they get kind of noisy. F41 suspension, boxed in uh, swing arms in the back, you can see, with the optional sway bar that goes with the F41. 12-volt Chevy rear. Uh, I don't know the ratio. Um, Donnie will have that all in a spec sheet, so if you're looking for uh, engine numbers, casting numbers, anything, Devin's going to take a picture of the uh, uh, numbers on the engine itself so that we can show you that it is not a restamp. And uh, everything will be there for you to see under the description of the uh, vehicle on our website. Continuing on, <laughs> the springs in the back are really nice. They look like they have been replaced. The shocks in the back are a set of uh, um, air shocks, so you can adjust the uh, height of this vehicle uh, to where you want it to be. If you want the back end to be a little higher, lower, level, whatever you want, you can do it. The uh, rear drums are heavy-duty uh, fin drums in the rear to coincide with the uh, uh, discs in the front gas tank is the original gas tank. It has not been replaced, nor does it need to be. And believe it or not, I can't even see a single mark or dent or scuff or anything on it. It still has its original bands on it. The floor itself in the trunk is just totally undisrupted. You know, we were talking about the uh, uh, subframe in the back transitioning up over. There's no marks whatsoever. Absolutely none. Now, this car is really nice. Uh, the uh, drop downs are the original in the corner panels. Um, <laughs> the piece goes across the back that ties the two uh, pieces of frame together, the uh, C-channel, because the box, it goes from box channel to C-channel to box channel, and then back the last couple feet into C-channel again. And this guy has everything just the way it should be. Uh, this is a really nice looking car. If you uh, uh, take a look at Devin's uh, uh, high definition photos, you'll see that the car has a lot of originality to it and all the structural integrity from when it was new is still present today. It's a really great car and take a look at it because it's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. Better yet, come down and take a look at it. We can take it out and beat it up a little bit for you. 
Okay, this is the uh, interior of our 70 Chevelle, real SS car, numbers matching. Uh, we're going to go everything, every, everything we show you in the interior, now that it's outside, it's a black interior, kind of tough to do on the inside. About 130 out here right now, by the time we get back, it's going to be around lunchtime, probably at 150 degree range. Um, one little split in the steering wheel here. I didn't notice it on the inside of the car whenever we were opening the doors, but there is one split here. Uh, horn works just as it should. SS designation on the steering wheel. It's a correct wheel for this car. Jeff gave us almost a full tank of gas, about three quarters actually, a little bit better. Speedometer, I'm sure, is going to work. The clock is not working, and we don't care. We don't do clocks, we don't do radios, but we'll try it anyway for you here. Let's see. Ah, yeah, radio is working. Radio does work. Okay, our auxiliary gauge is instead of the idiot lights, we have auxiliary gauge. You can see our temperature starting to come up. Yeah, it's about 100 and, I don't know, 150 degrees. And the uh, alternator is charging, and the oil pressure is up to about say, 65 degrees here. It's a fast idle. The fan. A little noisy, but it is working. Have to get Roger to find out why it's noisy. Um, wipers. Wipers are working and functional. And they do park the rest. Um, left turn signal. Beating itself to death over here. And let's see if the right one does the same thing. Yep, does the same thing for us. So both turn signals work. One conventional, non remote adjust mirror on the uh, driver's door. We can put one on that side if you so choose. You want a second one on it, but it did not come with it from the factory. Um, this is a really nice looking car, real clean interior. It does have shoulder belts also, which we didn't notice whenever we just opened the doors up. One thing I want to have to put up to you is there is a little mouse hole right here. Somebody got a little bit industrious through the years and wanted a place to live for the winter, I guess, and uh, that's where he went in. He got onto the uh, uh, sun visor and went up from there into the uh, ceiling. I'm sure he's gone now and that's the only mark I can see. It certainly wouldn't justify the replacement of the uh, headliner in his car but I just want you to know that it is there. No surprises from us here. All right we're gonna go for a ride see what this guy runs like. Look at this car. This thing is it goes straight as an arrow down the road. It can't it can't go any straighter than it does. I mean the steering is really responsive on it really responsive. I mean, you move the steering wheel and it reacts to it. And uh, again, you know, we're going to try it. There's no cars in front of us or behind us, so we're going to do uh, brakes, no hands. And there it is. Brakes, no hands. Stop straight as can be. Got a nice sound to it. Not objectionably loud, but it does have a nice pop to it, you know. It, it, uh, all the, everything's working, speedometer's working as it should. It's not jumping around and it, it appears to be fairly accurate. We're going about 40 mile an hour now. And, uh, all our gauges are up where they're supposed to be right now. And it's just a really nice tight running car. We'll turn it around here and give it a little shot so you can hear it a little better what it sounds like when it's under a little bit of a load. The transmission shifts just like it should. Uh, the car pulls very strong. You can certainly tell that it has more than 350 horsepower. Uh, it goes down the road straight as can be. It's just a really nice, got to aim it right now. Uh, it, it's just a really nice straight running car. It, it responds to the uh, steering input really well. It, it brakes don't pull. Uh, and it's just a very well, very well done vehicle. If you're in the market for a 70 Chevelle, which about every Chevy guy is, um, this is one you should probably take a look at simply because of the documentation that it has, uh, the originality that it has, not only structure-wise, but uh, mechanically. You know, it has the engine transmission, uh, it's a 12-volt rear, it's got an F41 suspension, you got a build sheet to show you all that, and it's available here at Hangster, so Come on down if you can, but if you can't, take a look at everything that, De uh, that Devin compiles for you uh, so that you can see exactly what you're buying here at Hangsters.